A premium keyboard is not just an impulse buy. You want to work with this keyboard for a while in your studio or on the road, and you wanna love it and feel connected to it. The touch needs to be right and creativity just needs to flow. These three keyboards made me feel that way. Today, I'm comparing three of the best premium 49 key keyboards out there. The Native Instruments Complete Control S49 Mark II, the Artoria Keylab Mark II, and the Novation SL Mark III 49. Each of these are the premium keyboards, the top tier from these companies. I'll put links to the keyboards in the description of the video. Now, if you're looking for a smaller keyboard, I've reviewed the top six keyboards around $100 in a video here. If you've got a favorite 49 key keyboard, leave it in the comments below, or let me know which one of these you like best. Let's get started with the Novation SL Mark III. It's hard to do justice to a review of the Novation SL Mark III without mentioning Ableton Live integration, which is top tier. If you're an Ableton Live user, you can't go wrong with this keyboard. Just press the in control button and you have full control of your DAW. But what if you use a different DAW? Well, Reason users will be happy to hear that integration is also excellent. For other DAWs, there is a basic control script. For FL Studio, with a little setup, you can control transport, mixer, and auto map enabled third party plugins. For Logic, you can control transport faders and pans, the basic stuff. Now, when it comes to Ableton Live, this thing really shines. Now, all three of these keyboards in this video will let you control Ableton transport functions like play, stop, record, etc., as well as faders and pan, solo, mute. These are all standard, but the Novation keyboard extends this further with clip triggering and control of Ableton devices right out of the box. Although you can do this with the Artoria, the Novation mimics the Ableton workflow in hardware form much more intuitively. Navigating the session view in Ableton feels just natural. Above all, Novation provides out of the box control of Ableton devices. So there's no setup required. Load up any Ableton instrument or effect and you've got hands-on control right away with clear feedback on these screens. In my opinion, this is the nicest keyboard for Ableton users who compose and perform with Session View. And I'm going out on a limb here, but if you're an experienced keyboardist, I feel that the SL Mark III offers a better overall experience than the Ableton Push 2. In session view, you can trigger clips. Of course, you've got your fader controls for the mixer here as well. Controlling drums with these pads feels great too. All right, so that's DAW control. But next, the Novation SL Mark III is a sequencer, and it's highly functional as a sequencer for hardware synths. In fact, this has the most thorough sequencer functions of any MIDI controller I've looked at. If you've got a bunch of synths, this will give you excellent control. So there are a lot of hardware templates to choose from, and uh, I've got the Prophet 6 connected. You can see a bunch of them here. I'll select the Prophet 6 and let's test out the sequencer. So I can record some chords in. And play them. And 
I've also got controls of some of the parameters on the Prop at 6. So as I'm playing, I can uh, modify the low pass filter cutoff. <laughs> high pass cutoff. And you can of course configure this. You also got the built-in arpeggiator. Similar to the Native Instruments S series, you've got these light guides here as well, and these can be used to set a scale, for example. So the scale I've got selected now is D major, and you'll see that the lights are just showing the notes that correspond to the scale of D major. There are a lot of other features that the Novation has, like the zone control, custom templates, and more. I can't go into all of them in this one video, but you should know that for any one of these features, there are tons of options, tons of things you can set, tons of customizations that you can do. On the back of the SL Mark III, you've got USB out, MIDI ins and outs, CV connections, and pedal ports, the standard stuff. Now with all that this keyboard does, it comes with a bit of a learning curve. Even some simple functions like turning on the arpeggiator can get complex if you don't read up or know what you're doing. I got stuck a few times just trying to figure out some simple features because it just goes so deep. The build quality feels really good, but it's not up to the standard of the Arturia Key Lab Mark II. The keypad feels good, it's synth-like, but I prefer a more piano-like experience. <laughs> The pads feel really good for finger drumming, but they are mini, but they actually feel better than they look, if that makes sense. The one thing that the Novation keyboard does not do, which Native Instruments and Artoria do extremely well, is integrate with its own software instrument package. Native Instruments and Artoria both include and have tight integration with their own software instrument bundles. Let's take a look at Artoria's next. These keyboards are not cheap, and spending this kind of money means you expect premium build quality. I think the Artoria Keylab Mark II really delivers in this area, especially given that the Keylab is the least expensive among these three keyboards. When you consider the features and software that the Artoria Keylab Mark II comes with, I think you get more than what you pay for with this keyboard. I've got the white version here, but this keyboard also comes in black. The keybed feels really good, but I had to adjust the velocity for my liking. It was easy enough to do. The drum pads feel good as well. For finger drumming, I do prefer Arturia's square grid layout compared to Novation's two rows. The Keylab Mark II has one screen in the middle versus the five smaller screens on the Novation keyboard. So not as many screens, but I actually prefer the layout of the controls on the Arturia. Arturia also tries to take care of all the most popular DAWs without focusing on just one. So right here, you can select your DAW. You can choose from Ableton Live, Logic, Pro Tools, Cubase, Studio One, Reaper, and there's also a standard setting for other DAWs. Selecting your DAW customizes some of the controls right away, and actually it comes with these magnetic overlays for your specific DAW. I have the Ableton Live overlay on it right now. Once you've selected your DAW, you get the standard controls. You've got transport for play, stop, and record. You've got your mixer controls right here. The faders feel really good, actually feel more sturdy and high quality than the Novation keyboard. You've got also your nine knobs here for controlling different parameters or mixer settings. Now, while the Artoria Keylab Mark II has custom settings for several DAWs out there, it doesn't cover all the bases for any particular DAW the way Novation does for Ableton Live. The Keylab Mark II will allow you to trigger and record clips just like the Novation did. but the Keylab Mark II won't give you Ableton device control out of the box. You'll have to configure that yourself. Arturia has the standard DAW controls, but where it really shines is its integration with its own software, Analog Lab. 
and it's got a dedicated button for Analog Lab here. What Analog Lab allows you to do is browse and audition sounds from Artoria's collection and load them into tracks seamlessly. Analog Lab is a huge collection of vintage synths, pianos, organs, and even presets from its wavetable synth pigments. The integration is very tight, allowing you to filter the full V collection of sounds by type and category. So for example, if I want to just search for pads, I can click this button right here. And in Analog Lab, it's already filtered all the presets for pads. And now I can just start exploring these different presets and load them up very easily. As soon as you load up a preset with Analog Lab, you have immediate control to start adjusting the parameters and doing all the sound design you want with these presets. If you love vintage synths and sound design, this thing is a dream. The Keylab also works beautifully as a hardware synth controller, giving you full control and customizability with the user modes. The user mode is kind of like the templates that you can set up with the Novation keyboards. The user modes can also be used to customize your software instruments to control them as well. And you've seen here, I've actually created a setup just for Nexus 2. If you wanna see me demo this with Nexus 2 and also run through the full workflow and all the features of the Keylab Mark II, you can check out my video here. If you're really interested in this keyboard, I suggest you watch it. Before we get to the last one, if you're finding this information useful, hit the like button and consider subscribing. Also, if you want to learn how to control any third-party plugin with any keyboard in Ableton Live, watch my video here. All right, finally, we have the Native Instruments S49 keyboard. Now, at first glance, it looks like we have much fewer functions on this keyboard. There are just not as many buttons, no faders, and no drum pads. So why do I keep seeing these keyboards in countless studio pictures? Well, I think it has to do with how well Native Instruments keyboards integrate with their complete control software and the NKS standard that so many software instrument companies have adopted. Basically, you can much more easily browse and audition presets from tons of virtual instruments with the S49. And once you load it, you can get basic control with the eight knobs for manipulating sound. This universal control is what makes Native Instruments keyboards so appealing. That said, their complete control software is now compatible with other MIDI controllers from other manufacturers, but you'll still only get the eight knob control. You won't be able to browse with this all important knob right here. This is what makes these keyboards special. The S49 makes the browsing and auditioning of sounds so seamless with this beautiful color screen. Definitely the best looking screen among these three keyboards. But the color screen is not just a gimmick. In addition to the deep integration with complete control, you've got your basic DAW integration and mixer controls as well. I love the visual feedback of your track levels on this screen. The S49 works with Logic, Cubase, GarageBand, and the recently added MCU support as well. So your basic functions like the transport controls for play, record, stop, and setting tempo, the metronome, and other functions like undo, quantizing, and things like that all work really well. The S series keyboards do fall short when it comes to Ableton Live session view control. Without pads, you just can't control clip triggering and recording. But the S series keyboards do give you control of the Native Instruments machine software as well. And you can do that right from the screen and with these buttons here. But no drum pads. Native Instruments keeps their drum machine products separately. So you can connect your S49 to your external hardware sense with the MIDI ports in the back, but it won't offer you the customizability and flexibility of the Novation and Artoria keyboards. I think the Native Instruments keyboards are really great for musicians and producers who mainly produce on their computers with software instruments. That's something to consider when making a decision.
Like you saw on the Novation keyboard, the S series has light guides as well. These can be used for the same kind of functions like setting the scale, but it also works really well with contact instruments like the one I've loaded up right now, which gives you different zones for different sounds or different functions. In this setup, we've got cellos, violas, and violins split on this keyboard. I can't say enough about how well the Native Instruments keyboards integrate with their software and make browsing and auditioning sounds so easy, but that's gotta be something that you really want. Now, you'll find lots of other 49 key keyboards out there and you should do your homework before deciding on one. M-Audio and Akai also make good keyboards. So what do I use? Well, I primarily use the Native Instruments S88 Mark II. It has piano action keys, which I really love. I also compose at home mostly, and I don't play live. I don't think you can go wrong with any one of these keyboards. Each has its own strengths and weaknesses, and it really depends on what you do most. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Keep making the music that you love and hey, check out one of these videos next.